When dealing with extrema on an interval, we have to think about what extrema means. And extrema means maximums and minimums. And maximums and minimums can potentially occur on an interval in three different places. Where the derivative equals zero, which is the most common one. Where the derivative does not exist, there are several instances of that, such as the peak or valley of an absolute value um, at the uh, potential breaking points of a piecewise function. But the most common place where the derivative does not exist is anywhere where the denominator is equal to zero. And maximums and minimums can occur on an interval actually at the endpoints of the interval itself. Let me give you just a second to copy that and then we'll get to this problem. I'll give you a quick rundown though. I'm going to talk while you're copying. What we're going to need to do is take the derivative and see where the derivative equals zero. We'll solve it. We'll also look for places where the derivative does not exist. And we're going to test all of those points along with the endpoints of the interval. So, here we go. I think that looks good. Let's, let's go with that. Okay. We're going to take the derivative of this using our special blue pen. Negative 8 minus 2x. Anywhere where the derivative equals 0, we'll solve that. We wind up with an answer of negative 4. There we go. So we found one potential value right there. Also, we keep in mind anywhere where the derivative does not exist, there is nowhere where this derivative does not exist. It doesn't have a denominator. It's not absolute value. It's not a piecewise that could break. It's nothing like that. So what we're going to do is make a chart. And that chart is going to include these points right here. So here it goes. Our x's and then our f of x's. It's easy to mix up whether or not you plug something into the derivative or the original or the second derivative and all that. We want to know about the maximums and minimums of the function, not the derivative. We want to know about the function. So we care about the point zero. We care about the point six. And we really don't care about negative four, and I'll tell you why we don't. Negative four is not in there. Negative four is not in that interval. So the potential maximum or minimum on the interval isn't even on the interval. So these are the only points we're going to test. If this was a positive 4, then sure enough, we'd go with it. But it's not. It's negative 4. So, made my chart too big. Oh well, we'll get over it. Uh, we're going to plug a 0 into the original. Plugging a 0 into the original gives us a 4. Plugging a 6 into the original gives us, give me a second, I'll tell you, 4 minus 48 minus 36. Negative 80. Okay. Well, at this point, we find the maximum, find the minimum. Sometimes we'll have numerous points. If there is a tie, you list more than one. Final answer. The maximum point is 0, 4. The minimum point is 6, negative 80. There we go.